Hello fellow witches and wizards, my name is Phoenix Shitty and welcome back to Nancy Drew Treasure in the Royal Tower. Now, I forgot something. I forgot something you can do. Let's go back down to the basement. Actually, let's go up to the first floor. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> And we will go up here again and look out here. Okay, so now we're on the second floor. This is where we are. See how that vent is broken open? Well, maybe there's a way we can get up there. Okay, so let's go to the last floor. Now we're at the bottom. There's something down there. Ooh. Fancy. And now we can go forward. Can we turn around? We can. We can look at that box. We can look up. There's the first floor door. And we can go over here. Strange sounds from below. There. Uh, nope. That's not what we wanted. Go forward. Turn around a couple times. It's stuck. There's a door that we'd like to go down. But we can go up the ladder. Let's go up all the way. We can reach the top. Can't go there. But we can go in here. Ooh, wonder where it leads. Can we go that way? Nope. Going straight it is. Where does it go? <gasps> yeah, that sound is always scary. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's the vandalized library. We found a secret way in. Look at us. Oh, 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 we better hide. Hide, 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 hide. Okay, okay, I hear you. Darn you, crazy old man. I know you hid that thing around here somewhere. The least you could have done was left me a hint. <sighs> I don't have time to clean this up. Hmm, does that mean that Dexter Egan is the one that vandalized the library? Well, let's go take a look, can we? That way we can. Oh. Nothing of interest. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and save it, because we did explore the elevator shaft thoroughly. I'm going to replace this save file. Come on. I feel like I never spell it right the first time. It's my own name! <laughs> okay. Let's explore, let's explore. Maybe, where, where's the hitbox? There we go. Okay. So we came down from the stairs, so we'll start from the right side of the stairs. Maybe. Okay. True stories behind famous portraits. C.B. Brown. More reading. Okay. Marie Antoinette, of the many great portraits painted by Marcel Bonnet, during his career, none has fueled more controversy and gossip than this portrait of Marie Antoinette, which was completed only months before the revolution broke out. It all began when King Louis XVI 
Marie's husband, commissioned an opulent jeweled tiara for her birthday. Set in the tiara were a ruby, an emerald, a sapphire, and a 52 karat diamond, bigger than any diamond ever before worn by French royalty. Marie was horrified by the tiara's extravagance and refused to wear it. It is even rumored that she referred to it as my crown of rumination, though no one knew what she meant by this. When it came time to have her portrait painted by the master, Bonnet, Marie insisted on posing away from the palace of Versailles, at Versailles, in the tower room at the Chateau Rogemont, where she often visited to escape the growing turmoil in Paris. Further, the queen refused to be painted wearing the tiara. King Louis was furious, but Marie would not budge. She chose to ornament herself with a purple rose instead, not just a flower, but a symbol of her willful defiance of her husband's wishes. When the portrait was finished, she gave it to the Rogemont, the Rogemonts, uh, in appreciation of their loyal friendship. Shortly thereafter, the revolution erupted in full. When Marie Antoinette and her husband were arrested, the queen refused to reveal the, ver the whereabouts of the tiara. Even after her execution, neither the tiara nor the magnificent jewels it con contained were ever found. To this day, speculation and heated debate continues about what became of the crown of ruination. The painting is now in the hands of a private American collector. Collector, yes. What became of those fabulous jewels, I wonder? And who is the American collector who currently has the painting? Why, it's Ezra Wickford, because here is the painting. Look at the background. Interesting background. Wonder where this is. And there's her purple rose. For here. Somebody hacked a hole in the wall. Sure is dusty. Sure is. Let's pick that up with a brush so we can get an access code. An Atlas of the United States. J. Putnam. Wisconsin, capital Madison, organized as territory, July 4th, 1836, entered Union, May 29th, 1848, nicknamed Badger State. It's the Hufflepuff State! <laughs> the Hufflepuff State! Okay, motto, forward. Their motto should be, find! <laughs> Sorry, that's a, uh, <laughs> that's a very Potter musical joke. <laughs> State symbols, flower, wood violet, tree, sugar maple, bird, robin, animal, badger, wildlife animal, white-tailed deer, domestic animal, dairy cow, insect, honeybee, beverage, milk, song on Wisconsin, dance, polka, symbol of peace, morning dove, global location, latitude 45 degrees north, longitude 90 degrees west. Which is interesting. Do all states have all of these official animals and plants and stuff? I know every state has a song. I'm pretty sure. I, I couldn't tell you what New York's is. I live in the state of New York. I have no idea what our song is. But I know that I used to live in Kentucky. And the song for the state of Kentucky is my old Kentucky home. So I'm pretty sure all states have, have a song. But I actually don't know. In my old Kentucky home, in my old Kentucky home, far away. I used to, um, I, uh, my dad is in the military growing up, so I've lived in nearly every state there is. Okay, no, that's not true, but I've, I've been to every state, almost every state, uh, at least been through it, um, in the United States for those of you who might not be from the United States. The Diary of Hans Axel von Versen. Hans Axel von Versen, 1755 to 1810, was a Swedish French soldier and diplomatic agent who became a close friend of Queen Marie Antoinette during the early 1780s and went on to work for the counter-revolutionary movement after 1789. After Antoinette's execution in 1793, von Versen wrote about her every year on the anniversary of her death until his own death in 1810. Many scholars have concluded that he must have been in love with her. 
His diary recounts his political movements during this time and provides us with valuable historical insight into the political climate in France at the end of the 18th century. The Diary of Hans Axel von Fersen, thanks to the fine scholarship of Melissa St. John at the University of Michigan, the significant historical document has been uncovered and translated into English. June 3rd, 1791, the trouble in France continues to mount. The revolutionaries have forced the king and queen to return to the Tuileries in Paris, where they are living like virtual prisons. Prisoners. I am working with the counter-revolutionaries to help the royal couple escape to England. June 18th, 1791, everything is arranged. False passports, a carriage, disguises. Just after midnight on Tuesday, the king and queen, dressed as servants, will slip out of the city by coach. It will be their, I will be their driver. I have instructed Marie to bring her jewels with her. If they are stopped, she may be able to bargain with the revolutionaries, her diamonds for her life. I can have no peace until I know that she is safe beyond the treachery of this revolution. June 27th, 1791. Alas, what a cursed night. I had not expected that Commander Leboeuf, Mary's most outspoken enemy, would be present at the checkpoint in Varennes. Marie tried to negotiate, but that scoundrel took her jewels and threw her at the mercy of her revolutionary apes anyway. I was helpless to stop him. She and Louis were escorted back to Paris like common criminals. The situation is grim indeed. July 1st, 1791. I still cannot speak to the Queen as she is kept under full-time surveillance. I am awaiting orders from Vienna as to what to do next, but I fear that it may be too late to save Marie or her husband. The thought of her suffering destroys me. Okay. More background information. And look what we have here. This thing goes off every time you open that door. And we actually found that door to be locked uh, when we explored the first floor. So when we get the key to open that door, we will set off this alarm. But if we use this brush right here, we're gonna figure out uh, which, uh, which uh, buttons to press because of that handy dandy magazine we read in Nancy's hotel room. Okay, so let me write this down. Uh, put access code. And it is, okay, the darkest one looks like it's three. It looks like it's star next. Then seven, then two. Three, star, seven, two. So we'll know that for when we come back in here. Perfect. Mm. Didn't... We probably want to move that globe to where Wisconsin is. Where did we see that? Ninety. We want to move that to ninety degrees west, I believe. Ta-da! Okay, so we have an astrolabe. I believe that's what that is. Negative 15, 10, and negative 5. Okay, but we haven't seen an astrolabe yet. Purple Hearted Queen, Hotchkiss. Ooh, pretty. Purple is my favorite color. So I, I really like the purple on this page. Traditional history books have solemn mentioned it, but there is ample evidence that Marie Antoinette's favorite color was purple. This is not an insignificant fact, as some might think, but one that may offer great insight into the character of a queen, who I believe has been hastily and unfairly judged, both in her lifetime and up to today. Purple is traditionally considered to be a color of majesty or royalty, but this does not mean that it is merely a color of wealth and power. On a deeper level, purple symbolizes loyalty, dignity, wisdom, and truth. When Marie had her portrait painted by the master, Marcel Bonnet, she chose to pose holding a purple rose instead of wearing the extravagant diamond tiara that King Louis XVI had given her. 
She knew that it would be insensitive to wear such a tiara at a time when the French masses were starving and angry. By choosing the rose, Marie acted with wisdom and loyalty to her people. As one of the last acts of her short life, Marie chose to wear purple slippers for her walk to the guillotine. Convicted of crimes for which she never confessed, crimes that were never proven, Marie accepted her death sentence with resignation. However, as she walked to meet her death in her favorite purple slippers, she expressed her unshakable dignity and her silent protest as to the truth of her innocence. Hmm. What is this? A sly rabbit will have three openings to its den. Three? Oh, here's the astrolabe. Okay. Um, let me write that down. I have things to do because now, uh, now we'll be able to do this. But I'm gonna have to look back at the code there, so. Astrolabe puzzle. We'll have a whoops, no, nope, no. Nope. Get me out. We will do this later. Um Okay. Good. So this has been thoroughly explored. Let me save it. Ah, every time I don't spell it. Every time I spell my name wrong, what's going on? Okay. I know how to spell, I swear. Okay. Um, good, so that's done. Uh, okay. So, uh, now we will, um, search Dexter's desk after hours. So let's, we don't, we can walk out the front door, I'm pretty sure, and it'll be fine. We'll walk out here. And we will go upstairs and set the clock. room is to the left and to the left again yep right there radiator still broken him is broken and we're gonna set the clock to oh midnight yes Don't know how Nancy sleeps through that, but we are going to go downstairs and take a peek around uh, Mr. Egan's desk. Take a peek, take a peek. Oh, you can go back around that way? Huh. Well, that's not what we want. A key! Now we have a key to the library. Perfect. Is there anything else we can see here? Pen Pals Paper Products. That's a steno book. Dexter Egan's steno book. To-do list. Shut down ski lift. Check emergency uh, generator. Get Brunei to fix prof boots. Refund guests who canceled. Snow plows. Try to reach Christy again. Change library alarm code. Change bulbs in tower. Replace filter in vent shaft. Keep searching. Keep searching for what? Get boots back to professor. Check basement circuit breaker. Get dinner orders from guests. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. So now we have the key, so now we can get into the library, the front way and the back way. Okay. Um, 
What next? Uh, we're gonna visit Jacques. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna change my alarm again. Did I see we have a voicemail? Okay. I thought I saw the light. Voicemail system. Please first message to no, to the okay. I thought I saw the light blink. My bad. Okay, so we're going to set it for 9 a.m. where Jacques will be at his post. This way is to use the elevator in this instance. No, 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 no. Also helps if I click in the right direction. Oh, it's already here. Perfect. To the basement. open. Let's meet the next character, Jacques Brunet. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Jacques Brunet. So, what brings you to beautiful Wisconsin? Bonjour. Je m'appelle Nancy Drew. I'm here on vacation. What's your excuse? Uh, my excuse? Yeah, what brings a professional skier from France to Wisconsin? Why not Aspen or Lake Tahoe? I am here for Isabelle, Mon Petit Chou. She is an American studying at the university in Madison, and I've asked her to marry me. That is excuse enough to be in Wisconsin, n'est-ce pas? And besides, I am not the first French work of art to end up here. Mon Petit Chou, in a literal translation, means my little cabbage. <laughs> but it is used as an affectionate term, meaning my girlfriend. Ah, so you came halfway across the world for love. That's a fine excuse. So, when's the wedding? Uh, uh as soon as possible. Why the rush? Do not ask me about the affairs of my heart, Nancy. Or I would think you were trying to steal it. But tell me, uh, how will you spend your time here, Nancy? I'm dying to have a look inside that library. I heard it was vandalized. Do you know anything? Nancy? A pretty girl should not worry herself with this type of thing while she is on vacation. Uh, I should warn you, Dexter is very protective of this place. He does not take kindly to people snooping around where they should not. Thanks for the tip, but I think Dexter and I are going to get along just fine. Get along just fine, you say? <laughs> ah, a woman who knows her own powers of persuasion. Elle est dangereuse, non? Ciao! She is dangerous, no. I am studying French. I enjoy the French language. Uh, I took all the French I could in high school and as much as I could in college. Um, not fluent by any means, but I am familiar with the language um, to an extent. Um, okay. Did we get our boots? Did, did we? I feel like we didn't even talk about that. We didn't. 
He didn't give us the boots. I thought... <sighs> no, wait, no. We need, we need boots. We need Anansi, boots, Jack. Como se va? Tell me about these boxes you're making. When I am not skiing, I need some other way to express myself. So voila! I make these hope boxes for keeping secrets safe. I'm sure you have many secrets, Nancy. Do you know much about the tower that's closed off? I heard the original owner imported it from France. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. Uh, Marie Antoinette used to visit this tower when she was Queen of France. Uh -huh. Until she lost her head in the revolution, that is. Okay, so we actually didn't do that yet, so I might actually skip that. I need to bring Professor Hotchkiss her boots. Do you have them? Uh, yes, I fixed her boots. Uh, but you should be relaxing by the fire, sipping cocoa, Nancy. Not running errands for Dexter. Yeah, I'm not wrong about that. I'll talk to you later. Ciao! Yeah, um, I triggered that conversation because I clicked on our locker, but we actually haven't discovered that the combination doesn't work yet. Oh, well. Skip ahead. Okay, so now we have Professor Hotchkiss's boots. Now we can go give them to her. Second floor. And she is to the right. Yeah. And over here. Yes, hello! Is that Jacques with my boots? Actually, it's Nancy Drew. But I do have your boots for you. Oh, good. Uh, boots, fine. Uh, thank you, thank you. Everything is fine. Uh, just leave the boots at the door, please. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and it seems I'm out of change. I'll just have to tip you the next time, Mandy. It's Nancy, and I'm happy to leave the boots. But if you're not too busy, Professor, i just like to introduce myself properly and ask you a couple of questions. Questions, yes, yes, and proper introduction sounds lovely, but not now, maybe later. Okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and leave the boots for her. And if we get up and turn around, that's her taking them. Okay, um, so that is that. That is that. Uh, and we will uh, try to open our locker and see that the combination doesn't work next time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you liked the video, click the like button. If you would like more videos like this, please click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I upload a video. Also, when I go live. I am not going live this week because it's Christmas week, but I will be going live next week, every day, Wednesday, except Wednesday and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and except Saturday where I'll be streaming here on YouTube 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I also have a Patreon link in the description below. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching and have a magical day.